Okay, now we are going to start the vascular disorders of small and large intestine. The main thing that we need to know about uh, this is that what is the blood supply? It is supplied by celiac, superior mesenteric, and inferior mesenteric arteries. And all these three arteries make uh, connect with each other, forming the mesenteric arcades. These interconnections are also uh, supplied with additional arteries, for example, the proximal celiac and the distal pudendal and iliac connections. Okay, so um, the main thing that we need to know before we start the diseases is that uh, if there is ischemia due to obstruction of one artery, uh, so because of all these arcades and connections, um, the bowel will tolerate the progressive loss of this uh, blood disease, uh, blood loss. But um, due to acute compromises, it will lead to infarction of several meters of the intestine because it could not compensate all these um, hypoxia. So first disease is ischemic bowel disease. Here, uh, there are three types of infarction. One is mucosal, the other is mural, and the third one is transmural. These three infarctions lead to this ischemic injury. The mucosal one will not go deeper than the muscularis mucosa and the mural one will not go deeper than the submucosa and the transmural is uh, the one that involves all the three layers of the wall. The mucosal and mu uh, mural uh, infarction will be because of acute or chronic hypoperfusion whereas the one that is transmural will be due to acute vascular obstruction. Now we are going to see what are the different causes of uh, hypoperfusion and vascular obstructions. These obstructions can be caused by atherosclerosis, aneurysm or hypercoagulable states or if a woman is taking OCPs or due to embolism, any vegetations, aortic atheromas. Whereas hypoperfusion can be due to cardiac shock and cardiac failure or dehydration or any vasoconstrictive drugs. Then we see that the mesenteric venous thrombosis can also lead to ischemic diseases and other causes may be all those traumas and um, tumors, etc. Then we see what is the pathogenesis. Now there are three things that we need to know um, in the pathogenesis that what will be the severity of the ischemic bowel disease. It comprises of the severity of the vascular compromise, the time frame uh, during which it develops, and the third one is that which vessels are actually affected. So there are two phases in this ischemia. The first one is hypoxic injury, which is less damaging than the second phase, which is reperfusion injury. In the reperfusion injury, there is a restoration of the blood supply due to collaterals, but, but, it will lead to free radical production, neutrophilic infiltration, and inflammatory mediators such as complements and cytokines. So now we are going to see the two aspects of the intestinal vascular uh, anatomy. This is due to uh, two things, watershed zones and the pattern of the intestinal microvessels. In the watershed zones, we say that there are two zones, splenic flexure and the sigmoid colon and rectum. These two zones are those where the intestinal segments at the end of their um, respective arterial supplies. And these areas, the splenic flexure and the uh, sigmoidal colon and rectum are at the particular system susceptibility to ischemia. The next thing we need to know is uh, the pattern of the intestinal microvasculature. In this, the intestinal capillaries will make a hairpin turn at the surface to empty into a post capillary venules. And these capillaries are from crypt to the surface. And whenever uh, the surface atrophy occurs or necrosis or sloughing occurs, uh, there will be uh, ischemic wall disease. The morphology is that there will be, uh, this injury can occur from all the way from the stomach to the anus. There is no specific zone, but um, the involvement will be segmental or patchy. There will be ulceration, there will be hemorrhage, there will be edema, and the blood will, um, that is tinging the mucus or its blood itself, will accumulate in the lumen. 
Next, the, the muscularis propria will have coagulative necrosis. There may be serocytis and perforations. Uh, the crypts may be hyperproliferating due to the immune responses. The neutrophils will not come initially, but they will come in the stage of reperfusion. Then this, the, if the ischemia is getting chronic, it will lead to fibrous scarring and stricture formation. And there may be formation of the pseudomembrane um, due to bacterial superinfection. The clinical features will include um, that there will be uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and a melanotic uh, stool. And it may be associated with the cardiac and vascular diseases. And main things that we need to remember are that the peristaltic sounds will diminish or disappear on auscultation. And the muscular spasms create broad, a board-like rigidity of the abdominal wall. The differential diagnosis can be of acute appendicitis, perforated ulcers, and acute cholecystitis. And it may also lead to sepsis, which will cause mortality rate to exceed to 50%. Um, the progression of the ischemic enteritis will depend on many things, um, such as mucosal and mural infarctions. Uh, the transmural ones are more dangerous. The chronic in, uh, ischemia that there will be uh, episodes of bloody diarrhea interspersed with uh, periods of healing. Next, there can be cytomegalovirus infection as well because of, uh, because of immunosuppressive therapy complications and uh, there may be radiation, uh, radiation uh, enterocolitis if a person is taking radiation therapy, necrotizing enterocolitis and that will occur in mostly in the neonates and it is the most common acquired GI emergency and it can be um, angiodysplasia which is because of the malformed submucosal and mucosal blood vessels and this mostly occurs in the right side of the colon. Next we are going to see hemorrhoids. These are dilated anal and perianal collateral vessels that connect the portal and the cable venous system. Uh, about 5% of the general population is affected by this and it will be uh, due to maybe straining in constipation or the venous stasis of the pregnancy or the portal hypertension. Now we are going to see that there are external hemorrhoids and internal hemorrhoids. The external ones are located below the anorectal line and the internal hemorrhoids are due to dilation of the superior hemorrhoidal plexus and the external is obviously of the inferior one. We see that on examination, of uh, histological examination, we see that these hemorrhoids are thin, walled, dilated submucosal vessels that are beneath the mucosa, that is submucosal one. And there may be rectal bleeding, they, not maybe, it's obvious that there will be rectal bleeding, how are we supposed to diagnose it? And um, which are subject to trauma and this will, um, these may become inflamed and thrombosed. Hemorrhoids are often manifest with pain, rectal bleeding, that is bright red stool. And uh, the treatment will include rubber band ligation, infrared coagulations, clerotherapy, and in some cases that are very severe, it has to be surgically removed by hemorrhoidectomy.